Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. We built, developed this venture manufacturing program to kind of combine what we see as our expertise as a contract manufacturer with really a venture appetite. Uh, and we want to shift the burden from, from a venture perspective, shift the burden from the customer uh, who, to Drummond to develop these uh, manufacturing, uh, scaling, build out programs. A full team of quality control experts that every step of the way will be there to help with that ISO 13485 requirements being met, as well as FDA standards. A team of machinists building all of those components, all of those machines, small scale, medium scale, and large scale, as we talked about. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, can venture manufacturing be the key to scaling your diagnostic or life science device from concept to commercialization? Scaling a medtech device from concept to commercialization can be fraught with challenges, such as building scalable and cost-effective manufacturing processes. While some hurdles are inevitable, others can be mitigated through strategic partnerships that prioritize flexibility and long-term scalability. Drummond Scientific's Venture Manufacturing, a model that bridges early-stage innovation with full-scale production, is emerging as a potential solution. This approach allows developers to focus on core technology development while leveraging external expertise in manufacturing infrastructure. In this X-Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with two experts from Drummond Scientific, Michael Lutz, Chief Business Officer, and Scott Ferguson, Director of Venture Manufacturing. Together, we discussed how venture manufacturing can serve as a strategic bridge between product development and full-scale production helping medtech companies streamline scale-up, avoid common manufacturing pitfalls, and accelerate their path to market. Thank you, Michael and Scott, for taking the time for the Spotlight interview. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We're looking forward to, to speaking with you. So let's start with the basics. Michael, could you explain what exactly is venture manufacturing? Before I actually answer what Drummond sees as its venture manufacturing model, I really want to kind of flip the question and talk a little bit about why we came up with this model. Uh, we, there are two really difficult things that we see for companies that are building out, whether they're diagnostic devices or life science devices. There's the zero to one uh, problem. That's developing one unit that's going to work on a bench top. And, and that's extremely hard and extremely difficult for anybody who's developing a product. But then there's the one to one million model we call. And that's also a unique challenge in, in and among itself. Uh, you know, there's a lot of roadblocks to trying to get from that, you know, zero to one and one to one million that some of which are completely unavoidable, you know, FDA acceptance, payer acceptance, marketplace acceptance. Those are things that the founders have to go through. But there are a lot of, of avoidable roadblocks, which we're trying to solve for. Uh, you know, there are, you know, product development or lab testing uh, cut partners out there. Uh, Drummond's a partner in manufacturing scale and build out. So, but we see customers come to us all the time where they've started that process. They've started doing the manufacturing scale out and build up. And they've already gone to a point where they, unfortunately there's almost a point of no return. And so to use us, they would have to undo things they've done. So we built, developed this venture manufacturing program to kind of combine what we see as our expertise as a contract manufacturer with really a venture appetite. Uh, and we wanna shift the burden from, from a venture perspective, shift the burden from the customer uh, who, to Drummond to develop these uh, manufacturing uh, scaling build out programs. Uh, and I say shift a burden, it's not really a burden on Drummond because we've been doing this for over 75 years. Uh, we have the expertise in place, we have the infrastructure in place to, to do these for customers relatively easily. Uh, and, but for the customer, it's a completely new, uh, you know, thing they have to develop themselves de novo. Uh, and anytime you're doing that, you're going to run into issues. So we developed this program to try to help customers early so that they can avoid these roadblocks that they don't need to run into and really allows the founders to focus on what they're excellent at, 
the science and developing a new product and then taking that product to market and allow us to focus on the manufacturing for that. Now, Scott, so many companies struggle with manufacturing scale-up. How can they solve this problem? As Michael said, the, um, the Drummond Venture manufacturing model was really, uh, it, it addresses the, the problem that many startups, as well as established companies, see when they're introducing their diagnostic devices. Because all too often, really, really good technology that's on the benchtop fails because it's not designed specifically for that high throughput automation. And it's really important that you can partner with someone who can take you from that prototype stage through the production stages uh, and grow with you as you begin to feel that the difficulties and the pain points. So if you can grow with your contract manufacturer, that is all that important. And as Michael said, it, it, if you engage early enough, many of those pain points can be alleviated, uh, such as the prototyping, the iterative process that can be very, very time consuming and very painful, quite honestly, for a, a young startup. Uh, but most importantly, before the purchases are made of high cavitation tooling, very expensive equipment for the manufacturing of your devices, sometimes even taking it to uh, FDA for clearances, a lot of that expense can be avoided before you get to the, uh, the design lock where you know for a fact that your design is automatable. And Drum and Scientific, our approach to that is a lot of our small scale, a lot of our design work and that very small scale prototyping, really assembly work for the edification, for your um, for your milestones that need to be met for your investors. A lot of that is part of our due diligence. And for that reason, most of it is not, uh, or I should say it's offered at a, uh, a no charge. And Scott, Michael mentioned scaling from prototype to production and solving that one to one million problem. What exactly does that entail? That's the easy part, right? <laughs> The yeah, one million problem. Yeah. The manufacturing is always the easy part. Though. It's always the easy part, right? Yeah. And and it is really for a manufacturer who's been around for many many years with that experience and all with the optimized, call it, manufacturing setting in mind. The ability to have clean spaces, dry room capabilities, but also a vertically integrated team of mechanical, electrical, and automation engineers a full team of quality control experts that every step of the way will be there to help with that ISO 13485 requirements being met, as well as FDA standards. A team of machinists building all of those components, mm -hmm. all of those machines, small scale, medium scale, and large scale, as we talk about, uh, as long as along with the uh, dedicated operations team that executes all of those parameters that have been set forth when you do get to that high scale uh, automation throughput. Uh, but really, moreover, as long as your, your partner is a business to business minded with full scaling capabilities of small, medium, and large throughput, the, uh, the ability to package, the ability to label and ship, all of those things are crucial for success. And that is one of the most important things that you can look for in a true manufacturing partner. And Michael, to wrap up, if a company is developing a new point of care diagnostic device, when should they reach out to engage? There is no too early. We are, Drummond, are, are really willing to have a long runway to success. Uh, we work with customers. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's months, but many times it's years. Uh, as they build out their their uh, products for uh, benchtop units all the way through to commercialization, uh, we like to say we're good with though quick no's and long yeses. So, uh, you know, if we're not the right partner, we'll be we have an ecosystem of people we work with who, you know, likely will be the right partner for somebody. So whether it's product development, whether it's lab testing, uh, you know, different kinds of uh, molding experts, uh, you know, we, we try to be. Uh, somebody who can, if we don't have the answer, we'll be able to find it for you. And really one of the things that 
we like about this early engagement model and, and we talk about venture manufacturing, right? You know, part of venture people hear is well, investment, right? They want venture investments. Uh, you know, Drummond actually does invest in some of its uh, manufacturing startups. So because we're in there early, we get to know the technology, we get to know the partners, we get to know the board and who, who's helping run this company and do they have that pathway to success? Uh, you know, and then, you know, if, the, if they're raising capital, we actually will uh, consider, uh, you know, whether it's cash or uh, in-kind machine build in exchange for capital so that reduces the amount of capital that these companies need to raise. Raising capital is hard. Uh, any any startup will tell you that, um, you know, and, and part of this as well is we, we're talking about removing these roadblocks that customers have to go through to get to commercialization. It, it makes commercialization cheaper, right? And by reducing these roadblocks, by, by using the tools that are out there, it means you have to raise less money and it allows uh, companies to uh, get to commercialization on less, on less capital, which will make your early investors happy, you can get a bigger return, allows founders to retain more equity because they don't have to get uh, drilled down as much. Uh, and it also opens up new equity streams. If you have to raise, you know, 50 to $100 million, you have, you're really looking at, you know, maybe venture capital, but probably private equity. If you have, if you can keep it in the you know, low, you know, low 10 millions of, of capital to get to commercialization, all of a sudden an angel investments are available. So we're trying to help in the, uh, customers develop from prototype to production and commercialization faster. It helps the ecosystem of diagnostics. It helps our customers uh, scale and grow faster. So, you know, to answer the question, when should they engage? You know, again, there's, there's no such thing as too early. Well, thank you very much, Scott and Michael, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Yeah, it's been really been great. We look forward to learning more about Drummond Scientific's work in venture manufacturing and its impact on the medtech space. Thank you all for joining us for this XTalk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.